Hey there, I'm Sarah. Before I dive into my story, do me a solid and hit that like and subscribe button, would ya? Trust me, you're gonna want to stick around for this wild ride. I'm your typical suburban mom, living what I thought was the American dream. My husband Mike and I have been married for 12 years, and we've got this amazing little boy Jake, who just turned 10. We live in this cookie-cutter neighborhood, where all the houses look the same. But ours? It's the one with the perfectly manicured lawn and the white picket fence. Yeah, I'm that mom. Life was pretty sweet, you know. Mike worked his 9-to-5 at some big shot company, and I ran my own little bakery from home. Jake was killing it at school, always bringing home A's and making us proud. We were that picture-perfect family everyone envied. I gotta admit, I'm a bit of a mama bear when it comes to Jake. One time, this kid at the playground pushed him off the swing. And let's just say that kid's mom got an earful. Mike always said I was overprotective. But, hey, that's my baby boy we're talking about. Anyway, everything was cruising along just fine until the Thompsons moved in next door. Mr. Thompson was this slick businessman type, always on his phone. And Mrs. Thompson was, well, let's just say she tried a little too hard to fit in. Honey, we should invite the new neighbors over for a barbecue, Mike suggested one evening. I rolled my eyes. Do we have to? That Mr. Thompson gives me the creeps. Come on, Sarah, give them a chance. It's the neighborly thing to do. So, against my better judgment, we threw this big neighborhood shindig. Everyone was there, kids running around, adults sipping beers and pretending to like each other. The Thompsons showed up fashionably late, of course. Sarah, darling. Mrs. Thompson air-kissed me. This is simply fabulous. You must give me your secret for these divine burgers. I forced a smile. Just a family recipe. Meanwhile, Mr. Thompson was schmoozing with all the guys, talking stocks and sports. Mike seemed to hit it off with him, which didn't sit right with me. He seems like a great guy, Mike said later that night. Yeah, if you like fake smiles and designer suits, I muttered. The whole time, I couldn't shake this uneasy feeling. Call it mother's intuition or whatever, but something about the Thompsons just rubbed me the wrong way. A few days after the barbecue, Jake was out riding his bike. I was in the kitchen, whipping up a batch of cookies, when I heard the most horrifying sound, screeching tires followed by a sickening thud. My heart stopped. I dropped everything and ran outside. There was Jake, crumpled on the ground, his bike a mangled mess beside him. And who was standing there, phone in hand, looking shell-shocked? You guessed it. Mr. Thompson. I... I didn't see him, he stammered. He came out of nowhere. I rushed to Jake cradling his unconscious body. His arm was bent at an unnatural angle, and blood trickled from a gash on his forehead. Someone call an ambulance! I screamed, my world crumbling around me. The ambulance ride to the hospital was a blur. I held Jake's hand the whole way, praying to whoever would listen. The doctors rushed him into surgery, leaving me alone in the waiting room, covered in my son's blood. Mike showed up an hour later, breathless and panicked. What happened? Is he okay? That asshole Thompson hit him with his car. They're operating now. Hours passed before the doctor came out. Jake's got a broken arm, three fractured ribs, and a severe concussion. He's stable. But the next 48 hours are critical. I collapsed into Mike's arms, sobbing. When we finally got to see Jake, he looked so small and broken in that hospital bed. I vowed right then and there, Thompson would pay for this. A few days later, Mike tried to talk to me about the Thompsons. Sarah. Mr. Thompson came by. He says it was an accident. Maybe we should hear him out. Hear him out? Are you fucking kidding me? Our son is lying in a hospital bed because of him. I know, but... No buts, Mike. I don't want to hear it. That man is dead to me. Jake's recovery was slow and painful. Every whimper, every tear fueled my anger. Mike kept pushing for forgiveness, causing more fights between us. They're our neighbors, Sarah. We can't avoid them forever. Watch me. One night, I overheard Mike on the phone. I know, John. Sarah's taking it hard. Just give her time. Yeah, I know it was an accident. I couldn't believe my ears. My own husband. Siding with the man who nearly killed our son. The final straw came a month after the accident. Jake was home, still in a cast and moving slow. Mike came in, looking nervous. Sarah, we need to talk. I... I think we should invite the Thompsons over for dinner. I exploded. Are you out of your fucking mind? That man almost killed our son. It was an accident, Sarah. 
John feels terrible. He's offered to pay all of Jake's medical bills. Oh, so that makes it okay. Our son's life has a price tag now. That's not what I meant, and you know it. You're being unreasonable. Unreasonable? You want me to break bread with the man who broke our son? I can't do this anymore, Sarah. Your anger, this... this toxicity. It's too much. I laughed bitterly. My toxicity? That's rich coming from you, Mike. Taking his side over your own family. I'm not taking sides. I'm trying to keep the peace. To move forward. But you won't let it go. Let it go? Jake could have died. But he didn't. He's recovering. Life goes on, Sarah. We can't stay angry forever. Watch me. Mike sighed, rubbing his face. I can't live like this anymore, Sarah. This anger, this bitterness. It's poisoning our family. If you can't find it in your heart to forgive, then... then I don't think I can stay in this marriage. I stared at him, shocked. Are you seriously choosing that asshole over your own family? I'm choosing peace, Sarah. I'm choosing to move forward. If you can't do that, then maybe we need to go our separate ways. And just like that, my perfect life crumbled completely. First, my son in the hospital, and now my husband threatening divorce. All because I refused to forgive the man who had destroyed everything. As Mike walked out of the room, leaving me alone with my anger and pain, I made a silent vow. I would make them all pay. Thompson, Mike, all of them. They had no idea what they'd unleashed. The divorce hit me like a freight train, but I didn't have time to wallow. Jake needed me, and I had a mission. Balancing my bakery work with Jake's care was a nightmare, but I managed. Every spare moment was dedicated to my new obsession, taking down Thompson. I started small, watching his comings and goings. That's when I noticed a pattern. Every day at 3 p.m., he'd be on his phone, pacing in his backyard. Suspicious much? Over the next few weeks, I played the perfect reformed neighbor. I baked cookies, shared gossip, and slowly wormed my way into Linda's confidence. All the while, I was gathering intel. Oh, John's always on his phone, Linda complained one day. Business calls, you know. He even sleeps with it under his pillow. Bingo. It took some careful planning, but I finally got my chance. Linda invited me over for book club, and I accidentally left my phone there. When I went back to retrieve it, John was in the shower. But instead of my phone, I grabbed John's. Thank God for Face ID. Back home, I dug through his records like a woman possessed. And there it was, clear as day. Texts sent at the exact time of Jake's accident. But that wasn't all. I found emails between John and Mike, discussing some hush-hush business deal. The pieces were falling into place. As I watched Mike drive away, I felt a surge of vindication. The pieces were in place. Thompson and Mike thought they were so clever, but they had no idea what was coming. I picked up my phone and dialed a number. Hello. Is this the district attorney's office? I have some information about a hit-and-run case involving John Thompson. Yes, I'll hold. The game was on, and I was playing for keeps. Thompson, Mike, they were about to learn that hell hath no fury like a mother scorned. And me? I was just getting started. The morning after I tipped off the DA's office, all hell broke loose. I was sipping coffee, watching Jake eat breakfast when the siren started. Through the window, I saw cops swarming Thompson's house. Linda was in hysterics as they led John away in cuffs. Mom, what's happening? Jake asked, eyes wide. Justice, baby. That's what's happening. The arrest was just the beginning. I'd sent an anonymous email to Mike and Thompson's company, detailing their shady dealings. By noon, both their names were mud. My phone blew up with calls from neighbors. Did you hear? Thompson was texting when he hit Jake. I can't believe Mike was involved. How could he? I played dumb, of course. Oh my god, really? That's terrible. The neighborhood turned on them faster than sharks smelling blood. Linda stopped showing her face outside. Mike couldn't even pick up Jake without getting dirty looks. Meanwhile, I focused on Jake. His physical therapy was going well, and seeing Thompson get his comeuppance seemed to lift his spirits. Hey, kiddo. How about we take a trip? Maybe look at some new places to live? Jake's face lit up. Really? Can we get a house with a big backyard? You bet. And maybe a dog, too. As we packed up our life, news kept rolling in. Thompson was facing serious charges. Mike and Thompson's company was under investigation. Both were financially ruined. The day we left, Linda caught me loading the car. You did this, didn't you? Somehow you orchestrated all of this. I just smiled. Karma's a bitch, Linda. Give my regards to John. 
We found a cute little house in a new town. Jake started a new school, made new friends. I opened a small cafe. Life was good. Then, about six months after we moved, I got a call from Mike's sister. Sarah, it's Mike. He... he's been in an accident. My blood ran cold. Is he okay? The other driver was texting. Mike's... he's paralyzed from the waist down. I hung up, emotions swirling. Part of me felt vindicated. Another part sick. Jake found me crying in the kitchen. Mom, what's wrong? I hugged him tight. Nothing, baby. Just thinking about how lucky we are. That night, as Jake slept peacefully in his new room, I sat on our porch, sipping wine. I thought about Mike, alone in a hospital bed. About Thompson, probably in a jail cell. About Linda, isolated in that big house. Did I feel bad? Maybe a little. But then I remembered Jake's broken body in that hospital bed. The fear, the pain, the betrayal. No, I didn't feel bad. I felt free. The next morning, Jake and I took our new dog for a walk. The sun was shining, birds singing. As we rounded the corner, our neighbor waved. Beautiful day, isn't it, Sarah? I smiled, genuinely happy for the first time in ages. It sure is. It sure is. Life wasn't perfect, but it was ours. And after everything we'd been through, that was enough. As for Mike, Thompson, and the rest, well, they made their beds. Now they had to lie in them. Me? I was too busy living my best life to care anymore. Revenge might be sweet, but moving on? That's the real victory. That's the end of Sarah's revenge story, folks. Now I've got a question for you. Was Sarah justified in her actions, or did she go too far? Sure, Thompson hit Jake while texting, and Mike betrayed her trust. But did they deserve to have their lives completely ruined? Where's the line between justice and vengeance? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I'm dying to hear what you think about this messy situation. If you enjoyed this wild ride, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe for more juicy stories. Your support keeps these videos coming. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.